What's up, Cigar Club family? Welcome back to another episode of the Cigar Club podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in and leaving your thoughts and feedback on each episode. If this is your first time joining us, the Cigar Club podcast is where we talk about all things cigars with you, the Cigar Club family. On today's episode, I have a very special guest on to talk about a cigar uh, that he released. Oh, I can't see it. El Politico. Um, so let me, without further ado, introduce Joshua Haberski, and we are smoking his El Politico cigar. I was going to say it. This was your first blend, correct? Like, this was your first hey. release that you could stamp your name onto, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And That's what I thought. Real, real fun project. Well, I actually went for the first time to Nicaragua and got to tour a bunch of factories. And, uh, you know, this one, it was out of the Pichardo factory. And, um, you know, it was a cigar that we basically said I had my taste profile and have been mm -hmm. smoking cigars for, you know, a decade plus and and said, hey, you know, this is what I like. Typically, it's on the very stronger end, a lot of a lot of La Jara, a lot of, you know, Nicaraguan tobacco that packs a punch. It has some strength. Mm -hmm. I smoke a lot yeah. of cigars. I'm in that, you know, anomaly category. And uh, so we basically said, hey, water it down a little bit because, um, I, I, you know, I want to enjoy it personally, but this is for people, you know, it's my calling card, it's my business card, you know, on the inside it says presented by Joshua Haberski. Um, so we wanted to give it to, you know, first time smokers and seasoned cigar smokers. Yeah, I love that. And, and uh, as I get closer to the band here, I'll be sure to take it off and show everyone. But I love that you had the ingenuity to say, hey, not only am I presenting this as a cigar, but I'm going to do this in such a unique way that this is a business card for people to know me about what I do and all that. That you're like, hey, I'm going to put my name on the inside and, and let them know. You know, you always see uh, really cool ways that people design business cards where you're like, you know what, I'm going to make a cigar out of it. Why not? Yeah. And, you know, have the characteristics of the personality. You know, I'm not, um, you know, a, a blender. I'm not a, you know, cigar personality. My sure. day job, I'm the lobbyist for the cigar industry, but I have, you know, through learning, active learning, mm -hmm. um, you know, develop my palate, develop my interests. I'm very interested in the marketing and communication side of the the industry and have dabbled in it a little bit. And this was, you know, a, a great first project to kind of connect the two together um, and, um, you know, present uh, dignitaries. You know, when I go into a meeting, instead of talking, you know, conceptually about cigars, it's always nice to be able to say here, you know, give this a try. Um, you know, should you partake into it or give it to a friend or a family member? It's one yeah. of those things where I meet a lot of people, you know, that don't smoke cigars, but, you know, or work on it from the policy side. But a lot of times they will take it and, uh, you know, give it to a, a friend or family member that they know that in, enjoys uh, premium cigar. Yeah, I feel like I may, obviously I'm, we're biased because we, we smoke cigars every day when we're involved in it. But I feel like you, everyone knows someone that has a cigar, even if it's occasionally once a year or stuff like that. So that's really cool. Like, hey, you may not smoke cigars, but, you know, feel free to give this to someone. But I still want you to have this at the other day because it's it's my business card. It's it's, you know, more about me and who I am. So that's yeah, I, I love that. Um, I'm going to do a quick blend breakdown for everyone uh, listening at home. This is and correct me if I get any of this wrong. Uh, we have a Mexican San Andreas, uh, which I love that you decided to include specifically that it was high priming San Andreas. I love when we get to know more about the particular tobacco that's used, whether that's the location, you know, like someone does Nicaraguan Esteli or Jalapa, or Condega, or Viso Seco, High Prime, like all of that information. Them, I, as a consumer and being in the industry, uh, which is still weird to say after three years that I'm in, I'd never in a million years, but I, I've been able, thought I've been able to say I'm in the cigar industry. Um, I, as a consumer, I want as much information about it. I want to know if it's been aged, if you can tell me for how long. So, uh, I really appreciate that you had the ability and, and able to say that it was uh, Mexican San Andreas from high priming. We've got Costa Rican binder and Nicaraguan filler. And once again, this was made at Tabacalera Pichardo. Uh, when was the... When was this cigar released? So, because this was your first release, and you've had two since, at least that I'm aware of, uh, yep. typewriter and um, the lobbyist, right? Yep. So, uh, we we've actually this was the yeah first one 
we started working on it over the pandemic. Um, okay. I, I went to Nicaragua in the midst of the pandemic. Um, Luciano and Pichardo uh, both worked on this project. Um, you know, we had t- conceptually been talking about it for, you know, a few months prior, uh, but it was the the trade show uh, rate Right, right after the pandemic that uh, I got the first actual batch with the bands on it. Okay. Um, and then we ended up getting boxes about a year later. Um, so, you know, the cigars that are going to cigarclub.com, um, these have been aged in, in a humidor for, you know, two plus years. Yeah. So it, you know, in addition to the aged tobacco, it was also aged, uh, you know, uh, again, and it, it, it's one where like we were talking before the broadcast started, you know, we, we kind of have 10,000 cigars or so, and that's about it. Like there's no plans on, on doing any more. This was a fun project for me to, you know, use it as a, a teaching instrument. Mm-hmm. And we decided to, you know, release some of them, uh, you know, to, to our club, you guys have been great. I mean, with the typewriter, with the lobbyist, yeah. those collaborations, I think that, you know, your, uh, group has been always welcoming to the, you know, these projects. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in this one, I think it, of, of the three, it is probably the strongest, um, I agree. you know, uh, um, and, um, but it has that unique story, um, the boxes we do. So I have a shop in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, a retail cigar lounge called the Brig Cigar Lounge. And everything I do is connected to history in some way. History and yep. really political history. That's where the lobbyists came from, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, your your viewers know about. Um, so, you know, this one, the box is, you know, has the regalia, the, the blue, um, and, and the imprint of the U S Capitol. Um, it's available at, at, the the brig, which is oh, cool. after the brig Niagara, uh, during the, which is the picture, uh, behind me there, yeah. the battle of Lake Erie, the ships were made in my hometown, Erie, Pennsylvania, which didn't have a cigar lounge, um, in the city. And we decided, you know, Erie was working through a v- revitalization, they approached me and they said, uh, "Hey, would you know, would you be interested in helping kind of oversee this project?" Yeah. Um, and I did. Um, you know, I was very involved in the design side, working on kind of the different partnership elements. So, you know, working with the existing small businesses to create win wins. Um, yeah. You know, we are unique. We sell a chocolate fondant cannoli cigar. That's a dessert item. Um, that people can get that's the local bakery. That's oh, an that's example awesome. of it. We have uh, moonshine tastings from uh, moonshine distilleries. So, you know, kind of set up all of that. My mom was uh, retired last year, was uh, assistant superintendent of schools. Mm-hmm. And um, I told her flat out, you're not going to sit at home and do nothing. So she's actually running the cigar lounge. That's her retirement. Gig. You put her to work. Put her to work. <laughs> and, I mean, she's doing it leaps and bounds. I'm not involved That's in, awesome. in, in the project anymore um, now that it's it's launched. and um, But she's just taking it, run with it. Oh, we have a waiting list for locker holders um, and kind of built a cigar community where, you know, one existed, obviously, there's some uh, mm-hmm. great uh, shops around there. Um, and that's, I think, an important thing of like, you can work and be a good person in the industry, good steward of the industry. I called every shop owner that was within 50 miles and said, hey, are you OK if we do this? Like, I'm going to oh, wow. lend my expertise. But like, if you have a large scale event, I want you to feel comfortable that you can host it at this place. The yeah. development corporation is, is putting resources together and we can fit 86 people. It is a big cigar venue and we do a lot of private events. We built out a bar. We don't have the liquor license, but mm-hmm. we um, have a conference room and bar that fits about 30 to 35 people. And we are we've been hosting everything from political fundraisers to diaper parties there. <laughs> which has been has been wild to see that's awesome no i love um the fostering of community uh you were mentioning hey i want to get as many local businesses involved and kind of have that 
crossover so that way you're promoting them they're promoting you um i think that's a really good thing as, as someone who lives in a small town and has a developing and thriving small town i love when my local businesses collaborate together and, and have that spirit of the town and the community and are willing to do crossover events or you know even if it's something as simple as as putting a bake item, right? A baked yep. item at, at the brewery or the cigar lounge or whatever it may be, you know, even if there isn't an inherent connection, obviously baked goods are with beer and cigars, yeah. but you know, you know, candles, whatever it may be. Uh, I love that fostering of community and that sense of community it, in small towns. It's one it, of the reasons why I love Opelika so much is we just have a really good community and, and everyone's putting effort into revitalize our downtown uh, with small businesses and um, just really great things. And I, I love that that was an approach that you took. And it's amazing. Not too many people are going to call yeah. the local competing businesses and say, hey, uh, you know, are you OK with this? I think that's that speaks highly of, of who you are uh, and, and your willingness to, you know, elevate the cigar community and industry. I think that's very admirable. And if if they would have said no, you know, the project wouldn't have gone through. I mean, it, it's been it was three years to develop it. I mean, we worked with contractors and it was um, great to see it actually open up. And, um, you know, Liberty Cigar uh, Company, another partner mm -hmm. who did the lobbyist, um, they are the host of our conference room. So all the artwork from the bands that John Adams does, yep. his wife, uh, Ellen, does all the artwork. So that our conference room will be filled with Liberty Cigar art. Um, so, you know, that's too cool. It's, it's a little bit of a museum uh, yeah. in itself. That's how we wanted to design it. So like you have the TVs and it looks like the cannon ports of the ship. So it's a, a long. Um, no shot. So we, we really kind of put an imprint on that history to yeah. tell the story. Um, and as you know, with the. Uh, so I, I actually I have. El Politico, Chicago typewriter, the lobbyist, and one that I we really haven't released anywhere other than the shop um, mm -hmm. is called the Carronade, which is the Cannons, uh, Oliver yep. Hazard Perry. John Adams did that one also. Oh, wow. So, That's amazing. So um, hit the packaging there, and it's part of his Naval series. Mm -hmm. He just yep. released uh, uh, the second part for Stephen Decatur. I know I think he's working on John Paul Jones next. So, like – there's a biography with it. It's that to me is eerie cigar eerie. Um, you know, if, if you go there, that's a, a item for folks that are 21 and over, they should pick up, um, yeah. as a, as a collector's item. So, um, you know, we're excited about that, but it, again, it all kind of started with El Politico and the reception that we got, um, when handing it to people, saying, oh, this is a really good cigar. Can I get more of those? Can I can I try this? Where do I get them? So, you know, I want people to uh, have the opportunity to uh, try these things, much like we did with the lobbyist. Um, mm -hmm. You know, may, maybe in the future we decide to make more of them. And, sure. um, you know, obviously I think now the, the norm is pairing it like we did as you know, Chicago typewriter with a rye whiskey, yep. a lobbyist with a apple brandy. Uh, yep. So, you know, really cool uh, partner, again, partnerships. The one for the yep. lobbyist was a local distillery uh, luminary in Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So yep. I'm a firm believer in everyone can succeed together. Just come up with ideas and win-wins. And we're actually later this year, I'm, I'm not doing any new cigars. Sure. Um I am doing uh, a few redos um, in different sizes and different formats. Mm. So uh, John and I have talked about uh, different size for the lobbyist. And instead of uh, honoring Grant, um, which mm -hmm. I think we talked on the last podcast. Yeah. The story is that mm -hmm. you had uh, Ulysses S. Grant, when he was president, would sit in the Willard Hotel and people would visit him in the lobby, lobby, ask for political favors. He would drink brandy and smoke cigars. That's where the term was really popularized. So um, this go around and, and we're, we're swapping Grant out. We're going to do something a little bit different um, and honor William Hall, which uh, he was a, a Revolutionary War general. And um, he was 
not successful in a lot of battles. You know, obviously, you know, Washington, Benedict Arnold, like there's a lot more popular revolutionary Story, war generals, yeah. which, you know, John is is doing that as part of different series and that. But mm-hmm. I approached him with William Hall because I was reading something in the Senate archives and um, William Hall was actually the first person to lobby the U.S. Congress for veterans benefits after the Revolutionary oh, War. Oh. So that he was really the first, quote unquote, lobbyist um, in the United States. That's that's amazing. First off, uh, I, I bet it's really fun to go through the Senate archives. I love <laughs> that, that talks about how much of a nerd I am. I, I mean, I'm right there with you. There was a, a course in. <laughs> so I'm a history major. Uh, there was a course that I still to this day kick myself in the butt for not taking. And that was archival history. Um, and you know, just learning the ins and outs of being an archivist arc, arc, yeah, that word. Um, anyway, my favorite part of one of my favorite parts is as I was writing my thesis was going down into the Auburn archives and just going through stuff that did not pertain to what I was writing about in one iota, but I had access to it and you best believe I was going to get my hands on it and just go through it. So first off, I bet that was really fun experience. Um, but more on, on hall and, 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 um, kind of the, new take on the lobbyists and the new size for the lobbyists. That's really, really cool. Not only was he one of the first lobbyists, but for me, you know, he lobbied for the Revolutionary War veterans. Like there's so many yeah. stories, there's so much kind of story that you can tell um, <laughs> with that cigar. I think that's going to be really, really fun and, and really, yeah. really interesting. And, and as you know, like I'm, I'm, I try to, you know, support charitable causes. This isn't a, mm-hmm. a you know, money making play for me, any any of the yeah. projects. So my hope is to, you know, work and donate to Cigars for Warriors or a charity yep. that's connected to veterans in, in a unique way. So, um, you know, we're we're excited about that. Like I, John, be, yeah. it, he's just as you saw from the interview that we did a while back, like he's such an interesting person. And like I've been very fortunate to work with incredible blenders and incredible companies, incredible marketers for all of the projects. I mean, Al- Alec Rubin uh, with yep. the Chicago typewriter. I mean, that that cigar in itself uh, is is a masterpiece. And like it is the, the funny thing is with, you know, Erie has been open for two months now um, in the actual lounge. But we started with like a summer pop up shop just a Mm -hmm. couple tables outside with dominoes, Cuban music and espresso. And then, uh, you know, 3000 count humidor to build the buzz. Like, Hey, this is coming. It was on the, you know, first floor of where the, it sits now. And, um, so looking at the, the sales and that, uh, the Chicago typewriter was number one, the carronade surpassed that. And um, now the lobbyist is is number one. Um, oh, that's fantastic. El, El Politico is steady in the top 10. All of those cigars um, yeah. are in our top sellers. And it's like it's cool to see that 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 people are getting to enjoy. Um, and, and there is, you know, demand for it because it could yeah. be a flop. You know, you, you always worry like, oh, my gosh. And I'm sure Every that the, the blenders and the, the manufacturers that do this as their career they're always worried about, oh, God. I don't want to have a flop. And, yep. you know, fortunately, I think, and I'll be interested to see <laughs> from your, uh, your your cigarclub.com, this go around, you know, do they like the cigar? And I get different favorites, too. Like, people have tried yeah. all four of them, and people, oh, I love the lobbyist. Oh, I love El Politico. I love the typewriter. Yeah. And it's different for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had, Thank speaking on, on typewriter and lobbyists, I mean, we had so many people reach out about the lobbyist and where they can get it and if we had any more. So that was a huge hit. Typewriter, another huge hit. This is the first time that I'm smoking it right now. This with age, I can't imagine this like fresh off the roller. This would have had some some umph to it, even with, you know, some of that scaled back. Uh, but it's creamy. It's chocolatey. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, leather, a little bit of cedar to it. Overall, very pleasant. I'm smoking this. It's 10 a.m. First cigar of the day. Haven't eaten anything. I've had coffee in me and yep. it's not overpowering. It's super clean on the palate. Um, and, and, and it's what you would expect with a cigar made by Luciano. You know, he's got he's a wonderful blender and he's got this intrinsic ability to really 
um, excite your palate and have you wanting to come back for another puff and, and it be a different, you know, sensation, different feeling, different tasting notes that you're going to get each time you're smoking it. Uh, and so, I mean, these are, this is fantastic. Uh, yep. and I, this will be, and, and when you offered, came to me and approached me like, Hey, we've got El Politico. We'd love to, for y'all to, to bring it in like you had, it was an easy no brainer, even though I hadn't smoked it, it was an easy no brainer because of how good and how, how much I enjoyed and how much the cigar club family enjoyed, uh, typewriter as well as the lobbyists. I knew that this would have a great home in, uh, our boxes. So thank you for allowing us the opportunity to introduce this cigar to your, our members. Um, and it's really cool having now we we're going backwards as opposed to starting off with the first and going forward. Oh. We've kind of now come full circle and being able to introduce, uh, the first cigar that you had involvement with. Uh, and that's really, really fun and really, really cool. Um, <laughs> It, Remind me, when you did the typewriter whiskey, who was the who made that? Uh, it was a rye whiskey, correct? Yep, it was a cast strength rye whiskey. So Alec loves you know high proof uh, yeah. whiskeys and bourbons. Uh, so you know we work with Clearwater Matt over there, and um, you know they they developed that, and uh, it, it's a good pairing. I you know for this cigar in particular, this is I, I think what pairs best is uh, like a cappuccino or mm -hmm. aged rum. Um, so okay. like Florida Cana 12 year or 25 year. That yeah. is that actually when I and I, I like the 15 year or the 12 year. Um, the 12 year Florida Cana is what I first paired paired this with um, okay. when I was in Nicaragua. And it was actually a smaller oh, yeah. size uh, cigar. We decided to go with a Toro. Um, in final production, that was one of the tweaks that I had made because I wanted it to be a presentation cigar. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, versus like the typewriter, that was quick smoke when I'm walking. Walking, between. yeah, I love that. I love um, that concept. So, you know, I, I, I get involved a little bit on like the logistics, just enough to, you know, say that I have an imprint on it. But sure. um, I was amazed when I was in Nicaragua. We... Uh, I, I was at uh, Luciano's house. At, we had, you know, done all the factory tours, and I went to, you know, Perdomo, Oliva. I had, it was my only time. I was there for a week in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. in the midst of the pandemic, and uh, he had invited folks from AJ Fernandez factory, from Padrones factory, from uh, Oliva, some of the bigger companies, and then you know they had. Everyone from like up to general manager to, you know, rollers and I don't speak any Spanish and um, we're sitting there and he starts handing out the, the test samples of the cigar. And um, I was nervous. I'm, I'm sweat, sweating bullets, like trying to think, you know, are people going to enjoy this? And, um, you know, the, the reception ultimately was, uh, you know, very good. Oh, you're back. Back. Sorry. I was I didn't know if it was me or you, so I was just hanging tight. Uh you cut off for me when you said handing. Um he was going around handing the cigars to I assume everyone was there. Yeah, and and I you know, I was sweating bullets. I was nervous about the reception of it. And ultimately, you know, when I was getting, you know, thumbs up and or, you know, positive expressions and you know, the same yeah. stuff in Spanish, you know, that felt really good because this is truly an art form and mm -hmm. you have people I, I have been able to meet and learn from some of the best that are in this industry. Um, I love it and I see their passion and I can only hope in, you know, some of these fun projects to emulate them and um, get them to um, see that. You know, I'm not I'm not just an empty suit in Washington. And that was kind of yeah. the real reason by, behind El Politico is like I'm this young gringo, so to speak, yep. that <laughs> represents the industry in Washington. And I wanted some credibility. And and and, and I think that, um, you know, over the course of doing all these projects, they a lot of folks understand that I have mm -hmm. a deeper understanding. I have an interest and in, um one of the examples of that, I was at Pro Cigar in the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. and I went to the uh, EPC factory, and um, they did a, a tasting session there, and um, 
the Micah, the <laughs> factory manager, was shocked because no one ever went four for four on wrappers by taste. And no, he just smoking the like the Purito of it. Yep. Just no yeah. band, nothing. You know, he, he, you got to tell me where the country of origin is and about mm-hmm. it. So I went four for four and it was great because he's told this story to like 50 people afterwards. <laughs> now, everyone thinks I'm the savant in the cigar industry. I could Maybe never go four for four again. So, yeah. Don't don't have me show off. Uh, I was uh, call it whatever you want. But I mean. That's chops. Yeah, that's not. I mean, that's like a, a <laughs> wine sommelier when they're taking their sommelier <laughs> test and they're they're able to, you know, tell you bottle and year and vintage. And you're like, how the hell did you just do that? And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I got lucky. And this story is going to be he, he told about, it's going to evolve. He told one of my colleagues that story this year at Pro Cigar and it got back. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to stick with it. Uh, you know, they, that is, uh, it's going to, so cool. that's a story you'll always tell with a, just a big grin on your face. Yeah. Um, and that, that story is going to morph and evolve. And, and next thing you know, you know, you're going to be naming the binder that was in the cigar and, and take it. Yep. <laughs> but going back to having that, uh, group of just master blenders and, and just, um, as you were sitting around at the, um, was it the Pachardo factory or no, where were you when they, it, it, it was uh, uh Luciano's house, Luciano's house. Yeah. That's right. What a tough crowd to introduce a cigar to, and then just sit there as they're smoking it. And the relief and excitement that you must have experienced as they started to nod and give you thumbs up and enjoying the cigar. Uh, I had a similar experience with the first cigar that I blended as, uh, at La Isla when Elvin, the master blender roller at, uh, that Ostos works with, he smoked, I made changes to it and he rolled it and smoked it and he looks up and he smiles at me and he gives me a thumbs up. And, uh, I, once again, I don't, he doesn't speak a, a lick of English and I don't speak a lick of Spanish. Uh, so Ostos translated for me. And, and when Elvin, the, the master roller found out that it wasn't the first cigar that I had blended, he was, he was, uh, uh, very surprised and and um, shocked because of how how much he enjoyed the blend and and that alone that just that one person so I imagine that scaled across multiple people was uh, was an exciting experience for you and then then it was funny because like I I had this this was my business card so I'm giving it to everyone every members of Congress U S senators like and then in the industry like I got bundles literally at the trade show and um I you know I gave one to Rocky Patel. I gave one to George Padron. I gave them to all the big names. I'm so excited yep. about it. And they're like, you're giving me a cigar? Like normally I know, you right? know, <laughs> you know, lobbyists are asking to, you know, fill their pockets with free cigars that, you sure. know, it's a little bit of an anomaly. So, you know, I like to, whenever I travel to retailers or I travel and visit people in the industry, I'll usually bring, you know, uh, one of my cigars as kind of a, a cigar yeah. swap. Yeah. That's all. That's awesome. So it was there. So obviously this was your first blend and I'm going to take you back on a time trip here. Um, your approach to this blend versus the other two that have come out or three with cannonade, um, was your approach to this cigar, this cigar being your first, any different than the subsequent ones? Is, were there anything that you took from this experience that helped shape the future blends that you uh, were involved with? Yeah, you know, I I think like I gave Luciano and Pichardo a list of what I typically smoked and Mm -hmm. like it was kind of the basics. And then, you know, we had a couple different samples. Um, I think like in the lot lobbyist and some of my subsequent projects, um, I've been a little bit more involved where it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I like this. I don't like this. And, and there was actual feedback. I think yeah. in the beginning, I was kind of just like, all right, I'm just so excited to be a part of something. Like, I'm, I've am i been a cigar nerd since I was in college. And, yeah. you know, getting to do that and work with, like, major industry players, um, it, it's surreal. So yeah, I think sure. that, uh, you know, I, I now a little bit more involved, have more experience, have a better understanding. Um you know, with the Chicago typewriter, I just, you know, told Alec, I trust you. You yeah. know what I like. I, I'm more involved on the marketing side, like the yeah. brand creation, the box creation, the packaging. 
that's kind of what and, and the story. So like the naming mm-hmm. of it, like I chose El Politico, um, like I chose the Chicago yeah. typewriter. I chose the lobbyist. Uh, John chose the carronade. Um, I carronade. just chose the figure of honoring Oliver Hazard Perry. So, yeah. um, you know, kind of the front of house stuff, front facing on the marketing side. That's where I get a little bit deeper in the weeds. Um mm-hmm. I know what I like <laughs> and yeah, it, no, for um, sure. with, with, with cigars, you know, typically I'll get some samples and say, I, you know, I like this one and, and, and that. So um, it, it's been an evolution though um, yeah. and a learning experience. And like, I think that I get to speak better about the industry, having that understanding, having gone to the DR, mm-hmm. having gone to Nicaragua, having gone to Honduras. And like the cool thing, I wanted the trifecta. Yeah. I have, you know, four cigars that I was involved with, but, you know, countries of origin, I have one from Nicaragua, I have one from Honduras, and I have one from the Dominican Republic, Mm -hmm. all these major markets. Um, Also kind of the secondary tertiary and emerging markets, there are tobacco leaf. And this really speaks to how global and international the cigar industry is, you know, having, you know, tobacco from Cameroon, having tobacco Mm -hmm. from Brazil, having it from Mexico, like that to me is cool seeing all these distant parts come together. It's like this, you know, thousand piece puzzle. And then you got the 200 or, you know, 250 Mm -hmm. hands touching this. It's amazing that these are so cost effective for all that goes into it. No, you're hundred percent right. Um, and, and for you to be able to see, Generally speaking, you've Good. you've been involved or have seen with your travels um, all all those 200 to 250 hands. So you've got the full spectrum to be able to do what you do. And I think that speaks highly of your passion for cigars and the industry itself. Um, El Pol- you, you touched briefly on it and it may be just be pretty straightforward. But the name El Politico is 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 there a deeper meaning behind the translation to it or how did you uh, uh, arrive on that name? Well, you know, uh, Politico is obviously the big uh, publication in Washington, D.C. And, um, you know, it stands for people in politics, advocacy, lobbying. Um, and, you know, we just added the kind of the, the Spanish thing, um, you know, to give it a little bit more flair. Um, yeah. Obviously, with the the box and the the band, we wanted to have DC um, be the highlight, um, and um, it's one of those cigars that's like a, a, a swap with dignitaries, mm-hmm. um, and um, I, I think that uh, they it's been receptive. Everyone in DC, you know, recognizes that. Oh, it's El Politico. There's the connection. Like you don't have to dig deep into it to get the mm-hmm. purpose and the understanding of it. And it's then, right there. you know, kind of talk about the tobacco, the cigar, what's a premium cigar. It's show and tell. I, you know, I, I am able yeah. to show and tell through this cigar. That's awesome. I love it. I, I have a question. As we were talking earlier, uh, an idea popped in my head and take it. If you want to run with it, you can. But I think it'd be really cool to use for maybe a future project of yours, maybe even just for the shop, Pennsylvania Broadleaf, and have that paired with Pennsylvania rye, um, which was, you know, rye whiskey was the whiskey of Pennsylvania, the the whiskey, the original whiskey of the United States, so to speak. Um, I think, what is it, Dad, Pennsylvania Dad or Pennsylvania Dad's Hat? Hat? Yeah. Dad's, Dad's Hat. Yeah. yeah. That could be really fun, really cool yeah. to really showcase, you know, Pennsylvania, home state. Um, I don't know. Just that popped in my head as you were just, I that's like why that. I asked about the I, typewriter whiskey, see where it was from. I like the idea. I think that that would, would, would be cool. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, kind of getting the portfolio, I took a picture of all four cigars and then the two spirits together. And, <laughs> um, that was kind of like, wow, this, this was cool. Um, but you know, I'm, very pleased with all of the projects um, for different reasons, for different stories. Um, And it's one of those things where, you know, I I don't know that I'm going to do many more. I'm I'm content. And it's kind of like going out (laughs) on a high note. Like if you exactly, you don't want to run that runs, you know, (laughs) I don't want to strike out, you know? And, and I think that that's, the the fear and you know who knows maybe in, uh, in no, a, for sure. a couple of years i think the you'll get the itch. doing the redos and kind of doing different sizes 
Yeah. Um, that's kind of what, what I'll be focused on in the next, you know, few years. That's awesome. Yeah, we're very similar in the sense. And, and I never thought about this um, or I never thought I would really associate it with until, you know, I, I came a part of Cigar Club is cigars are such a yeah. really interesting medium to share and tell stories um, like you've done with a Politico typewriter lobbyist. We do with customs, right? So we come up with names and, and stories behind the name or, or maybe it relates to someone or the cigar or a feeling. Um, I never thought of cigars being a medium to tell stories, and I don't think a lot of people do. And I always appreciate when a brand releases a cigar, a cigar and it's more than just a name, right? There's, there's a meaning behind the cigar. There's a meaning behind the name. Um, there's a story associated with it. And I think it does such a wonderful job of connecting someone um, or the smoker to something more than just the cigar itself, whether that be Rocking the brand it. or like the lobbyist, you know, the connection to Grant. Um, it's just, it's really fascinating. It's never something that I thought about until I was on this side of things and, and coming up with those names and those stories. I think it's just a really fascinating way to um, share stories, but also educate, right? You know, yeah. someone grabs the lobbyist, they may not have known about Grant and his sitting in the hotel right. lobby and, and people coming to him, right? And they may have not have known that story and it may spark something, we're both history nerds, it may spark <laughs> something more where they're then grabbing a book on Grant or maybe they're grabbing a book on the history of lobbying, right? Like there's so much to it that can stem from um, the story and the name of Cigar that is, it's just really, really fun and interesting to me. Yeah, and you know that's kind of one of the reasons why my most recent projects have been with John Adams because that's yes. really the purpose of his company, um, mm -hmm. and he is all about educating through history, uh, through the cigars, and like it's turned into real world partnerships. You know, the Naval Series, uh, you know, we're giving them to admirals and and people that are you know on the fighting lines, and yeah. The um, he has so many other series, as, as you know, from, you know, at the conversation with him, you know, he has a partnership with the White House Historical Association, you know, honoring the different mm -hmm. pres presidents. And like, I mean, I feel as though he, <clears throat> he's doing it on a, a much larger scale. Yeah, and I've been very fortunate to work with him on two projects where like. We've taken, you know, kernels of ideas that I've had and he mm -hmm. has just taken it and ran with it. And, yeah. um, you know, I think he's very pleased with the the carronade and the lobby. I got to send you uh, the carronade, too. Yeah, I, I would love um, to smoke that cigar. You know, it's people ask me, what's my favorite cigar or the ones that I've done? And like, you know, I can't really answer that. But like I, I will say taste profile wise taste profile wise alone uh of what i like it's a very close race between the carinade and el politico gotcha. um, yeah. you know i think construction convenience things like that then you know chicago typewriter comes in um you know they all have different stories but like yeah. you know taste wise el politico and the carinade are two um you know heavy hitters in my book and I just able to get the bend. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There we are. Oh, not on me. <laughs> That's not the look. I had it for a second. There it is. Just such a really cool calling card and just adds another level of personality to the scar. Um, that personal connection as you hand it to them. And, and um, it's just it's genius and, and something that uh, is really, really cool to see. Fantastic. Well, I have to say, this is my favorite. <clears throat> it was the lobbyist, but this cigar is, I, I was shocked at, to me, this runs a little bit over medium. Uh, it's not to me, and I think maybe some of that has to do with the age now, but it's not a full blown, punchy in the face powerhouse, which just reading the description of the cigar I expected. Um, I think it's, it's, like I said, medium plus, Wonderful flavors. I think the most enjoyable part about this cigar for me, which I don't normally associate with Mexican San Andreas wrappers right. all the time, is it's clean. I mean, there is no bitter, harsh aftertaste. Um, I, you could smoke this cigar 
and an hour later from this, I'm not going to be like, oh, I smoked a cigar today, right? Like it's just, it's a wonderful kind of lingering flavor on my palate that is, allows you to either smoke another one or transition to another cigar. I mean, I could smoke a Connecticut after this and it's not going to overpower the Connecticut that I'm smoking. Um, and so I, I absolutely love that about this cigar. And I, I did not think the lobbyist could be topped for me because that is, I love a good Connecticut. I love everything about that cigar, but man, I'm getting on the retro and I'm getting nerdy here. It is like campfire marshmallows. It's just, it's, it's just creamy, but then it's got that like marshmallow sugary fluff to it. Wonderful. Appreciate it. Mm. Well, thank you again for letting us have the opportunity to uh, bring these to the Cigar Club family. We do want to give a giveaway here. And uh, I'm going to do a five-pack giveaway. Uh, question of the show. Didn't think about this one beforehand. I want to do something historical, uh, history-related. Uh, anything off the top of your head? Ooh. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I got, I got one that's a tough question. Oh, I love it. So Let's hear it. You know, Oliver Hazard Perry transferred over to the Brig Niagara during the Battle of Lake Erie. His first ship was incapacitated. What was the name of the first ship that he transferred over from? And like that, that story, uh, the, the carronade, and I, I, we were talking about that a lot. So I got, I definitely got it. Yeah, that's here. perfect. You know, John Adams, when he crafted that cigar and worked on the blend, uh, you're supposed to get notes of gunpowder and it's supposed to be the length uh, and, and take you this time to smoke from how long it took Perry to transfer from this ship to the Niagara. I remember when on the last time when we had John and you on that you, you talked briefly about that that kind of um, story and, and uh, evoking of, of a, a sensation and memory. So for a five pack of El Politico, uh, what was the original ship that Admiral Hazard Perry was on before he transferred? Is that the Correct. Uh, uh, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry. Yep. All right. So let us know in the comments below. We will select a winner. Hopefully one of you get it right. If don't, sucks. <laughs> but we'll select someone who has the correct answer to send a five pack of the El Politico. Josh, thank you again. Um, it is a pleasure to talk to you. I enjoy our delving into history and tobacco I, I think uh, we are very similar in, in our love for both topics. So thank you again for joining us. Um, until next time, everyone, happy smoking and take care. Cheers. Thank you.